All right, guys, here's what we're gonna do now. You're gonna make up your own scary story and you probably recognize this um, paper because we've used it before, but you're not gonna write the same story that you wrote about last time. You're gonna come up with something um, else. So thinking about your own scary story, these are just some ideas of what you might do. Does your city or town have any local legends? Make up a story about a monster, ghost, or alien that might live in your hometown. Make sure to use places you know as the setting. So if you want to write about this town, if you want to write about a different town that you know of, that's fine too. Maybe if you moved here from a different town or if your grandparents live in a different town or state or country, that's fine too. So it doesn't have to be about Santa Maria or Nipomo, wherever, whether, wherever you guys are living. It could be about maybe a town in Mexico that you go to every um, summer or maybe you are writing about a place in France that you used to frequent okay so the setting is fine try to make a scary story that's all we're doing here um, you're going to write minimum seven sentences so we're moving up from five to seven right and then you're just going to draw a picture here of the monster the alien whoever it is so if you want to tell a story, if you're like, oh, I can't think of something new, think of a story that you already know and just write about it. The most important thing is that you're writing and I'm able to see, are you using capitals correctly and periods correctly? Are you using commas in a series? Are you using commas before a conjunction, right? Um, so all of these things that we've been practicing with our writing, um, I want to see in here right? That's what I'll be looking for to correct. When you're finished writing your story, make sure you go back and check to make sure you have those couple things. Capitals, periods, you spelled the words that you know correctly as well. So minimum seven sentences. Think of a scary story. You can, if you really, if you can't think of anything, just tell a, a story or a movie that you already know. That's fine too. It's just me looking at your writing. It'd be best if you're able to be creative. Um, but if not, that's okay. Okay, for the next part, we're going to be looking at context clues, finding word meanings. And we've done this before. Read the sentences below, read the underlined word in the sentence, circle the answer choice that has the same meaning as the underlined word. This is something that you guys did on your star test. And we usually do this when we read fables and when we read um, Greek myths where we'll highlight a word. We'll read the sentence and the sentence before it and after it, and we'll try to figure out what that word means. We'll try to make our best guess. That's what we're going to do here, except for this time, we only have one sentence. So we can't look at the rest of the context, meaning the rest of the sentences around that sentence to find an answer. We ha can only look at the context of the word in the sentence, meaning all the words before that word we're looking at and all the words after. So let's do a couple of these together and then I'll read the rest for you to do on your own. Number one, the student replied to the teacher with a witty answer and the class laughed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change out this word for these words and see which one fits the best. The student replied to the teacher with a funny answer and the class laughed. Nice, that sounds like it might work. The student replied to the teacher with a mean answer and the class laughed. That could work too, but it'd have to be funny and mean. If it were just mean, most of the times people aren't going to laugh. They're going to go, oh my gosh, why would they say that? Right? So this one's a maybe, but I think this one would be the best choice. The student replied to the teacher with a word answer and the class laughed. This would be one I could cross off for sure. I'm going to say that witty means funny. So that's how we're going to do this. Let's do two more together. So I looked at my brother with a glare after he broke my toy. If you're looking at somebody with a glare, what do you think, how do you think that person is feeling? If somebody broke their toy, they're probably pretty angry. So that's what we wanna be looking at here. I looked at my brother with a confusing after he broke my toy. Does that even work in this sentence? Not at all. So let's just get rid of that. I looked at my brother with a dirty look after he broke my toy. What is a dirty look? It's an angry look, right? So that might work. So I'm going to put a little dot next to this one. How about, I looked at my brother with a difficult after he broke my toy. That doesn't work at all. We need a noun after A, and these two are not nouns. But a dirty look is a noun. All right, let's try one more. Number three, fireworks on the 4th of July give off a beautiful glimmer 
in the sky. Okay, thinking about fireworks making a glimmer in the sky. Do you think they give off a beautiful glow in the sky? Hmm, maybe. Do you think they give off a beautiful bright in the sky? Notice we have the word A. Afterward, it is a what? What part of speech is this? Adjective, right? And then glimmer is going to be a noun. So we have an adjective, and then usually after an adjective, there's a noun. Glow is a noun. Bright is an adjective. So we actually can't use bright. How about the next one? Fireworks on the 4th of July give off a beautiful look in the sky. Is look a noun? It is actually a noun. Hmm, so what do you think the answer might be? A beautiful look in the sky or a beautiful glow in the sky? I'm going to go with glow, right? Because fireworks do kind of glow in the sky. They're bright and shiny and they glow and glimmer. All right, see if you can do this on your own. You can use the process of elimination as well if you're not sure. There's certain words where you know, oh, I need a noun here. I'm not going to use this adjective. I'll cross it off. Or I know for sure that if um, somebody broke my toy that they're not going to look confused, something like that, right? So eliminate the choices that you know for sure aren't going to work and then see what will work. So I'll read the rest for you. Number four, when we go camping, my father will ignite the fire so we can roast marshmallows. Does ignite mean start, call, or see? Number five, he chose to delete the unhealthy foods from his meal and make better choices. Does delete mean include, make more, or remove? Number six, my grandpa will doze during television shows he watches when he is tired. Does doze mean cheer, nap, or discuss? Number seven, the curious puppy emptied the bag while he sniffed around looking for something to chew. Does curious mean problem, interested, or happy? Number eight, each day during the spring, there's a slight increase in temperature until summer arrives. Does slight mean small, increase, or bright? Number nine, the tower will topple if it has too much weight at the top. Does topple mean pounds, grow, or fall over? And number 10, the students who put in the best effort will be included in the celebration. Does effort mean attitude, hard work, or competition? Or sorry, completion. <laughs> okay, so um, before we move on, I just wanted to mention that for some of these, if you find two answers that are the same answer, neither of those will most likely be the answer, right? Because you're looking for one answer and if two basically mean the same thing, you can't choose both of those. You can only choose one. So that could be another thing you might look at in order to figure out what the answer is for this one. All right, good luck guys. If you have any questions, you can make a portfolio assignment on Class Dojo and send me a message there or have your parents send me a message or email and I can help you guys out. Have a good one.